Welcome to another video from inzara.com. In this video, I will be demonstrating the Gantt chart maker in Excel. And this is a new template which helps you create Gantt charts very, very quickly and easily. And it allows you a lot of control over what gets displayed and how it gets displayed. So this video, I will start with a brand new copy of the template and I will start entering the data and then we can see how the template works. So now I have the copy of the template open and let's start entering some data. There are three sheets in this template, the settings and then data entry and then Gantt chart. And so in the settings, there are three key inputs that you need to provide. One is the list of holidays that you want to exclude as working days from your Gantt chart. So for example, I'm gonna now say November 17th, I want it to be a holiday and then November 25th, I want it to be a holiday. So keep in mind that you're gonna enter the data just below the title here, holiday. So you start from row 12 and then you go. It's very important that you don't enter something here. For example, if I type in 28, does, does not get counted as a holiday because you did not enter the data as part of the table here. So I'm gonna delete this and you can enter in the row following the end of the table. So here, if I type here 1128, then it will accept that as input. And you can know that by seeing that the table here ends with a dark border line, and then that is the end of the table. And this arrow also indicates that you have reached the end of the table. And if I go here, I don't find the arrow in my cursor. So very, very important, this is, applicable to all the tables of data that we use in all the templates. So enter the data inside the table. Weekends, we can choose either um, Sunday as a weekend or you can choose from all these different options. I'm gonna choose Saturday and Sunday. And this means every Saturday and Sunday will count as a non-working day, which means that when the template is trying to calculate the end date of your task, it will exclude these days. And so again, we will see with an example shortly, but you can set customize your weekend days very easily in the Gantt chart. Now, resource name and color. So this is where we would enter our resource names who to whom we can assign the tasks. And you can use names of people, you can use names of teams, however you want to assign your tasks to. So I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm going to say developer one, marketer one, and you can assign colors to the resources. So I'm going to choose, let's say I'm going to choose orange for developer one, and then I can choose purple for marketer one. And now I have these two resources and colors assigned. I'm ready to go to the data entry sheet. And if you have a lot more resources, you can definitely enter more. For this demonstration, I'm keeping it very simple. This is where we will be entering the task data. And before we enter the task data, I also want to tell you about one of the features within Excel, which allows you to actually see two copies of the same sheet at the same time or same workbook. So go to view ribbon, hit new window. This opens up another copy of the same workbook that you have open. The, I'll tell you why this is useful here, but I'm going to go to the view ribbon again and say arrange all and I'm going to choose vertical and hit OK. So what Excel has done now is showed both copies side by side vertically. So I can now go to the right one and I click on the Gantt sheet and now I can see the Gantt chart at the same time as I have the data entry sheet on the left. So this is very, very convenient and we will see clearly now as we enter the data here on the left, the Gantt chart will get populated and instantly give us feedback. So I'm gonna type in 11.1, one. our project start date is a very key input. So once we put that, the Gantt chart will begin from that day onwards. And now we're gonna task, type some tasks. So I'm gonna make some task names up. And the first task we're gonna enter is a summary task, which means that there are subtasks within that. Then I don't need to input any more information. I'm going to just leave it like that and I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to type in task one one 
And this is a subtask under task one. So I'm going to select subtask. Immediately now you can see that this is shown in a different font and this is bold and that means this is a summary task and this is a subtask and I can assign a subtask to developer one and then I'm going to give a specific plan start date but before I give the plan start date let me just do a plan duration first and say it takes five days and so now immediately you can see that the Gantt chart is already getting built up even though I have not given the plan start date. And that's because the template is designed to minimize data input as much as possible. And so if you don't really have a plan start date for this task, you want to start it as soon as possible, then the template actually uses the project start date instead. So if you don't have any plan start date, the template will use the project start date automatically by itself. So it builds out the chart for you. So this is very convenient. But let's say you want this task to only begin from 11.2. Then you can type that in and immediately you can see that the Gantt chart reflects that the, the task actually begins on November 2nd and goes for five do work days. So five work days. In this case, we don't have any holidays or so. So it's not reflected but let's say if I put this as seven days now what happens is you go over the weekend so you can see the weekend shown in gray fill colors and that means 7th November 7th and November 8th are Saturday Sunday and they are weekends according to what we set in this template so if you look at this task now it starts from November 2nd and goes all the way to November 10th and that's because there are two weekend dates in between and so the template will automatically factor that in. If you scroll to the right on this task table, you will see that the task ID is getting assigned just for reference for you and also the plan end date is calculated for you which is November 10th. The other thing you have to notice here is that there is a summary level and there is subtask level. So at the subtask level, the, there is only one subtask here and so the summary uh, level dates are the same as the subtask summary level which is the one in bold task one it's actually calculated automatically for you so in order to illustrate that i'm going to create another subtask and this time it is going to be assigned to another person and let's say this one starts November 5th and it goes for 10 days. So now you see what happened is task 1 1 goes from November 2nd to 10th. Task 1 2 goes from November 5th all the way to November 19th because you have four weekend days in between which is 7 and 8 and 14 and 15. You also have a holiday which is November 17th in between. So all of that is factored in. Also you notice that the summary level task is automatically calculated. It looks at all the subtasks under that and then it picks out the minimum start date and the maximum end date. So at the summary level, you begin from November 2nd and go all the way to November 19th and that is automatically calculated based on the subtasks. So that is how you can enter a task which is grouped under a summary task. And now let's use another example where you don't really have any subtask it's a single summary task. So this one is task two. I'm not going to enter anything here and I'm going to assign it, let's say to developer one, and I'm going to enter this to be November 17th. And let's say this is going to take 25 days. And now you can see that the Gantt chart automatically updated. And that's because there is no subtask under this task the template will still understand that and will plot that out. And this is how the template implements the work breakdown structure framework. And now in order to see this entire Gantt chart, you can see it goes all the way through for 25 work days for task two. Now we have entered some planned data. And in order to also make the Gantt chart more customizable, you can say one of this task is a milestone. For example, let's say I'm gonna put this as a milestone. All I have to do is to select M. Immediately I can see the indication here on the Gantt chart. And then if I want to assign a task color, and let's say the summary tasks, I want to color it in a different, let's say I wanna do dark blue, and then this is also a summary, I wanna do dark blue, 
and now you see that the colors are not reflected here and that's because you have to change the Gantt chart to show instead of default colors use the task colors and now it'll use the task colors to indicate and you can also assign these to be let's say I want to do it gray and then this one is orange whatever you want to choose from the list of 10 colors available to you you can color each task differently and then make them show up very quickly on the Gantt chart itself I want to go back to the default colors and let me go back here and then now we will see that there are two columns available where you can enter actual information so actual is nothing but where you want to track actual schedule versus the plan so I am going to type in here task 1 1 it, sh it should have taken seven days according to the plan but let's say it took 10 days so in order to reflect that all I have to do is to say three which means three extra working days were needed in reality and then similarly let's say task one two it was supposed to take 10 days but let's say it only took five days so it's negative five which means that it uh, the actual schedule would be five days fewer than the planned schedule and now I have entered this information and I can also put a different start date for the task so if your actual start date is the same as the planned start date then you don't have to change anything or enter anything here but if your actual start date is different than the planned start date then just enter the actual start date so you can just type in let's say actual start date happens to be november 5th you just type that in and you're good to go and now we don't see anything changing in the Gantt chart yet and that's again because of the settings so we have decided to show only the plan in the Gantt chart but if you want to see the actual now you see the actual data here the the task 1 1 is actually starting from November 5th all the way to November 19th and then the task 1 2 is actually finishing much faster because it only takes five business days now and that is the reflection of the actual schedule and then you can also show actual versus plan and you can see where the actual is starting late and you can also see in this task the actual is ending much much earlier because it's five fewer days so you can see the actual is ending sooner so this is very very easy and instant all you have to do is to type in very few pieces of information in your data entry and it gets reflected here Another thing you have as input is the percentage of work complete and the percentage of work complete means the this is manual input by the user so you can enter let's say this task is complete 50% and this is complete 20% you just type that in there and you can now come over here and you can make that appear here and there you go 0% 50% 0 20 and that's because we have not entered anything here it shows up at 0% if I enter 10 there you go and this is purely displaying what information you have typed in there there is no calculation it just shows what you have input this allows the user to fully control what data gets displayed on the Gantt chart and there is also a built-in calculation called percentage work days complete and this is done based on the um, actual schedule it looks at what percentage of the work days have been complete and for example task 2 says 0 percent and that's because today is November 9th indicated in the light blue color here and then the task is actually scheduled to begin only on 17th and that means that you know that, that it hasn't started yet so there is zero percent complete so it reflects the number of work days in the past divided by the number of work days totally required for the task and that is the calculation so you can decide to show either of those or if you decide I don't want this at all just hit the delete key there and then it removes the display completely so again fully controllable by the user on what they want to use and if I decide to not show any specific task it's very easy to do that too so I can now say don't display this task to two there you go the task disappears from the Gantt chart if I want to bring it back I remove it so again giving you control on what task should be displayed on the Gantt chart 
You have some custom column information here, so you can choose this to track you know, other information you want about the task. And I can type in anything in here, and then it'll appear in the custom column, very straightforward. The other thing that is available for you is some summary metrics around your entire project, and then actual and plan, it gives you the span and days, very easy, straightforward. Workdays calculator, it helps you to calculate the number of workdays, because if you have a couple of dates, start and end date, and you want to know how many working days are there in between, you can use this uh, and type in your own date. For example, if I type in November 1st, it'll tell you how many work days are in between these two dates. And this is a pretty simple formula, but this is here to help you identify if you have weekends and holidays, then you, in order to calculate the number of work days, you don't need to worry about it. You can just type those dates and get the data, and then you can type that number of duration or in days directly in this template. So that is just for convenience and to assist you in inputting the information. Now on the Gantt chart itself, on the Gantt chart sheet, you have the table information that provides you more um, task level data. And then you can also see the uh, multiple options you have. So I'm going to make this maximized window so you can see the Gantt chart totally. And you can see here that we have a lot of control. And in the previous video, we kind of went through some of the options here and it it is totally up to the user to decide what data or what visualization they want to present. You can type in your project name, manager name, date, or you can just decide to type something else completely. And you know, here's a placeholder for entering some text um, to communicate a message to your audience. And then you have a couple of you know scroll bars which will let you go you know rightwards towards more days, or you can go and see one task at a time move one task up at a time, and then this will allow you to scroll. So let me come back. And the period allows you to do weekly, monthly, and yearly, and daily, all these different options. And the colors allow you to change the different colors. Now I, I chose resource colors, and this is using the resource colors that we assigned in the settings sheet. Again, very, very intuitive, very easy to use. Sometimes you have the need to only show for one resource, give me all the tasks. So I select resource and then I go here, developer one. Now I see only the task assigned to that specific resource. Again, very straightforward. The legend updates automatically for you. And if I go back to default colors, now again, we don't need to change anything. The legend gets automatically updated. So this becomes a readily printable and usable output for you. And so you can just go to file, print, and this will show the preview of the Gantt chart, and it's all ready to be printed, and you can either print it directly, or you can also export as a PDF by clicking here, and you can also decide to only print a portion of the Gantt chart by just selecting any, and then going to page layout, set print area, and now I'm gonna go again and say print, and now I can print a smaller portion of the Gantt chart, and this is all just standard Excel options available to you to customize what you wanna print. And this is um, all the Gantt chart template is built for building meaningful Gantt charts very, very quickly and easily, allow, and allowing you to fully customize it uh, and print it or export it as PDF and share. If there are any questions about any of the features in this template, please leave them in the comments and I will definitely get back to you. Thank you very much for watching the video.